I've been meaning to do this video for a while, but uh, yeah, I've been very, very lazy. So uh, yeah, script's ready. Let's do it. So when talking about VCRs, a very important aspect is audio. Uh, watching movies, watching TV, audio is a good chunk of the experience. Uh, I'm always kind of upset when I see people who have a big, beautiful TV and, you know, it's a flat screen with those tiny little speakers and then they have those speakers cranked and it sounds horrible. Audio is important. So that said, let's talk about VHS audio. Here we have a specimen, uh, a very early specimen. This is from 1979. This is the VDT350. The very first VHS VCR sold in North America was the VBT200, a slightly older version of this. Both made by Panasonic for RCA to sell in North America. And uh, you can watch Technology Connections video. It talks about uh, how RCA wanted this extra long play speed to fit four hours on a tape instead of two hours. Anyway, let's talk about the original VHS design. SP moves at about 3.3 centimeters per second, very slow. A compact cassette moves at 4.7, 4.59 centimeters per second, somewhere thereabouts. Very, very slow. And uh, to make up for that, you have a head drum that spins and helically scans the video heads against the tape. I'm not going to get into the details of how that works. There's plenty of information out there. Uh, I did a video on, on, on video heads. Check that out if you're interested. The long and short of it is you could fit very high bandwidth information on a slow moving VHS tape. But where did the audio get recorded? Well, the audio head, it's actually an audio and tracking controlled pulse head, was a non-moving stationary head that recorded to the tape just like a compact cassette, 8-track player, reel-to-reel -reel cassette did. Just in a one line, linear, along the bottom of the tape. So, can you see the problem here? 3.3 centimeters per second versus the other slowest audio format, compact cassette, which wasn't even meant for music. It was meant for voice. It wasn't until the 70s when uh, tape formulations and technology improved that you could really get decent sounding music on compact cassette. So this is even slower than that at its fastest speed. What about the slower speeds? Well, LP is half the speed of SP. And then when EP or SLP was introduced, that's a third the speed of SP. So your tape is moving at just over a centimeter per second at the slowest speed. And yeah, it's mono. VHS original spec is mono. One channel, lots of hiss, very, very low frequency response because the slower you move, the less particles of uh, material on the tape that move by. This was good for voice. This was good for TV programming. Even watching a movie um, on your TV. Programming back in the 70s was not what you would call hi-fi. You had a single speaker on your TV, but it was never really hi-fi content. So this was sort of designed around that. And of course, the slower speeds, you know, you're recording a program off TV, you're probably playing it back and you just want to hear it. You don't care about archival quality. You're not hooking this up to your stereo. Speaking of stereo, look what came next. The original first stereo VHS VCR, I believe made by Akai, was from around 1980. This is a couple years newer, but it's the oldest stereo VCR that I have. This is a Panasonic made by Panasonic, still top loader, still very early in the VHS era. So how did they go and put stereo on this? Well, they did exactly the same thing that um, Compact Cassette did. They took your mono audio track and they split it in half. So now your already very thin audio track, again, thinner than Compact Cassette and 8 track, is even thinner. Now, they also introduced Dolby noise reduction to the VCRs. Uh, this is Dolby B. 
So anytime you see a VCR that has Dolby noise reduction, that means that it will be supporting this old stereo recording format. It's often called linear stereo because, again, it's recording in a linear fashion in one line across the bottom of the tape. But the quality wasn't any better. Yeah, you have stereo, but the quality is still not great. So that brings us to the next big step. Uh, Beta introduced what's called Hi-Fi a year before VHS. I'm focusing on VHS right now. Beta comes a little later. So JVC kind of copied Sony a little bit. Not going to get into that. But what they did is they found a way to record high bandwidth audio using the video head drum. So by putting two additional heads on the video head drum for audio, you were able to record the audio in a similar fashion to the video using the helical scan method, which means that it's broken up into little segments. Uh, and those little segments give you a higher bandwidth because say for one centimeter of tape travel, you get, I, I don't even know what the equivalent is, 30, 40 centimeters of actual recorded information because you have those little segments recorded along there. Anyway, what this means is uh, JVC used a what's called record under method where the hi-fi heads would record the FM encoded audio onto the tape in the helical fashion and because it's a lower frequency than the video information when you go to record the video over top of it it doesn't fully record as deep into the magnetic tape. What does that mean? That means that the audio is still there when the video is recorded over it. So you can play back both and they're essentially recorded on top of each other. Fun little fact about hi-fi audio. If you ever have the tracking slightly off and you hear that buzzing or clipping or uh, clicking sound in the audio, that clicking is because the audio is split up and recorded into different segments and those segments line up with a field of video. And since there's 60 fields of video per second, you have 60 little segments per second. Now, if every second segment is dropping out, say because your tracking's a little bit off and only one of the audio heads is playing properly, you're going to get what sounds kind of like a 60 hertz buzz. This is basically a clone of the first VHS Hi-Fi VCR. It's made by JVC. This one's branded Zenith. JVC had their own as well. Went under a bunch of different brands. They all came out in 1984. And uh, this one's neat because it also supports the old style stereo. It supports linear stereo and hi-fi. Now, hi-fi surpassed compact cassette for quality, for the most part. In other words, you did not need Dolby noise reduction because the signal to noise ratio was so great, like 70 plus decibels signal to noise ratio, you don't get hiss. You can have very loud parts and very quiet parts and you can have that dynamic range. It's like something stupid, like 90 decibels. The frequency response, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The audio quality for hi-fi rivaled CD. And that's analog, CD's digital, but the quality still was there. So if you have a hi-fi VCR and you want to record a bunch of music, you can go out and buy a T120 and get six hours of music, a T160 and get eight hours of music by recording an EP. And here's the other great thing. Hi-fi audio doesn't get worse when you switch speeds because it's still recording the same equivalent speed, right? If you slow down the tape, the tape path where the tape's moving across the head, what you're doing in like uh, these VCRs is you're essentially pushing the tracks closer together. The tracks are still the same number of tracks per second. The, the video head drum is still spinning at the same speed, and that's what determines your bandwidth, essentially. So the tracks are closer together. So there's a potential for more noise in your signal. But when you're recording at such a low frequency like audio, it's basically immune to that. So the long and short of it is hi-fi audio sounds fantastic in the slowest VHS speed. So yeah, in the early days of VHS hi-fi, this was used as a way to record music. Uh, the advantage is, yeah, six, eight hours of high quality audio. Disadvantage, it's not really portable. 
You need to find other people who have a hi-fi VHS VCR hooked up to their stereo. Can't really listen to it in your car, but you know, for the audio file, it's pretty cool. And because these were used for stuff like that, these early VHS hi-fi VCRs had things like VU meters. They had adjustments for your record level. Uh, all sorts of settings that you would normally see on audio gear. So regarding both stereo formats, there's a little bit of a gaping problem here. If you were to buy a pre-recorded movie or rent a movie, most were encoded in both linear stereo and hi-fi after 1984. So great, wonderful, you have wonderful sound. But what about TV programming? Well, hi-fi obviously will give you very good sound quality, you know, great frequency response and everything recording from TV. But TV wasn't stereo back then. The North American method for encoding stereo into TV channels, analog NTSC TV channels, is called MTS Stereo, multi-channel television sound. Um, it had neat things like second audio programs, so you could have it in a different language or descriptive audio, things like that. Uh, and it supported stereo sound. But that came out the same year that these VCRs came out. So it literally went live in 1984, and this VCR was sold in 1984. So this VCR does not support it. But there was a thing back then called simulcast. And this is pretty neat. If you've ever looked at a VCR, um, that other linear stereo VCR I had out here supports it, and so does this one. So here is the input switch, your source select. So the middle is auxiliary, you know, your line in, if you want to hook a camera up to it or another VCR. To the left is tuner, now we're on tuner. And you'll see something called SC, sometimes two channel, uh, sometimes it, it, it uh, is the full name, simulcast. What does that do? Well, that takes the video from the channel you're tuning in, and it takes the audio from the line in on the back. Well, why? Before MTS stereo was commonplace, if a TV channel was broadcasting, say, a music concert or a movie or something that could take advantage of stereo sound, they would partner up with a FM radio station, either one that was owned by the same company or maybe they just did a deal together, where that FM stereo station would broadcast the audio to go along with the TV channel. So the TV channel is broadcasting the video and the mono audio, and then the FM station is broadcasting the stereo audio. So you could take your FM tuner, hook it into the line in on the back here, and record video off of TV and audio off of FM, and you could record the stereo program. So that's what simulcast is, and that was used in the 80s until MTS stereo became commonplace. Of course, now analog video is dead. There is no analog TV stations, or very, very few. So anyone's experience with MTS stereo will practically be non-existent. Uh, maybe if you have some RF modulators set up in your house for TV. I do, but mine are all mono. Uh, you're probably never going to care if a VCR has MTS stereo. So that's pretty much as uh, developed as audio got for VHS. After 1984, after Hi-Fi was introduced, it was offered as the high-end audio option for VHS until its demise in 2016. You could still buy mono VCRs that would record on that single mono linear audio channel only. Actually, they were extremely common through the 90s and 2000s. I don't know why. I guess they were cheaper. But linear stereo died off pretty quickly. By the late 80s, it was dead. So what about beta? Well, beta was very similar to VHS. Started out with a single audio channel. Speeds are obviously a little bit different. Beta was slightly higher on beta 1, but slightly slower speed in beta 2, which kind of became the de facto fast speed. So a little slower than SP. Not enough to make a huge difference. Audio track was slightly wider, but basically the same. Um, the only consumer grade linear stereo VCR that was sold uh, that was sold for Betamax was this Marantz one from 80 or 81. It wasn't very successful, but their commercial grade used two-channel audio. So any of the 
SLO series Sony VCRs had channel one and channel two recording for the professional grade. Uh, but here's the other thing. Beta was first to hi-fi. Sony introduced Beta Hi-Fi in 1983, a full year before VHS Hi-Fi came out. VHS Hi-Fi was a response to Beta Hi-Fi. This was the first VCR that came out to support it, the SL5200. Foreshadowing. And what's neat about Beta Hi-Fi is Sony was able to use the same heads for video and audio. Because of the, uh, the different frequency carriers versus VHS, they were able to fit the audio in there versus VHS having to use separate heads. So on NTSC Beta Hi-Fi VCRs, they only need one set of heads. You can have a two-head, two-head only Beta Hi-Fi VCR. They're video and audio heads. I believe the PAL Beta needed separate audio heads, but uh, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. And just like VHS, uh, beta hi-fi VCRs had your VU meters, your level controls. Uh, they could be used in a similar fashion for just straight up audio. One thing that was common on beta VCRs that VHS didn't offer was the ability to record PCM audio. PCM stands for pulse code modulation. It's basically a way to encode audio into a digital format. So what all the Sony Beta VCRs offered was the ability to buy an external processor that went and converted the audio from analog to digital or back from digital to analog and then you could record it in the video track of any Beta VCR. Because you had such high bandwidth in the, the video track you could fit that high bandwidth digital audio. Uh, those Sony Beta VCRs would have a switch PCM, which basically turned off dropout compensation, so it, would, it wouldn't it would mess with the information. It would leave the video information raw, and then let the PCM encoder deal with any error correction or stuff like that. But yeah, Beta did offer a way to record digital audio, it's just it would record it over the video track, so you, you wouldn't get any video with it. It was strictly a way to record high-quality audio using a beta cassette. Well, that's really all I have to say about VCR audio. Just thought I'd put that together. Thank you for watching, and uh, if you noticed any errors, omissions, you know, just want to discuss, feel free to leave a comment, and uh, yeah, see you next time. on the on the thick tape allows you to fit hi